So, uh, are you serious? It comes back, gives us one awesome scene, and then this happens. You know what's so ironic? I actually went to a document I wrote once upon a time where how much I love, what I like about One Piece. Reading this now and always complaining about so many chapters now, it's just kind of dramatic irony, you know. Doesn't necessarily mean this chapter was bad, but uh, to be fair, I, there was only actually one scene I liked in this manga chapter. But this is me, the angry anime fan, the despair reviewer, and this is of course One Piece chapter 931. A very surprising thing has happened. You know, uh, the Germa uh, 3 that Sanji got, I actually thought it was gonna be a very womanly design just for Niji and the rest to mock him. However, surprisingly, it turns out it is actually a real Germa thing. It is actually a pretty cool suit. Yeah, I have to say, that design is uh, awesome. I like it. More, but the thing is, he looks exactly like his older brother Ichiji and Niji combined with that suit. It's his Jeremiah's number three, Stealth Black. No, because it's not yellow, it is black. And Law knows that. Well, he is in North Blue, so every, every one know about the Jeremiah there. And uh, even Law hates the Jeremiah. Well, if, I think it's safe to assume that everyone in the North Blue hated the Germa, and given the fact that people they are, not surprising. However, what is surprising is that apparently there was a number three in the comic book, in the comic stripes. I mean, granted, number three did exist, and that was Sanji, but Sanji was disowned and he was considered a failure, so I'm pretty sh surprised that the comic strip even included a number three, despite the fact that he was disowned. I mean, granted, his name was Stealth Black, so maybe that was a pun on the fact that the German wanted him to be invisible to their existence. But I have to say, the design of Stealth Black is pretty cool. So, he, well, he, he calls himself also by mask, which of course the others do not like. He fights, and it's revealed that apparently the suit gives him the ability to become invisible, because that was even in the stripes. Yes, the comic book, The Warrior of the Sea Stora, which he actually liked the main character but didn't like the German, each uh, character did have a power, as we all know. However, it seemed that all the other uh, uh, Smoke children had power even without their suits. It's just that the suits enhanced their powers also. So, so was so Sanji's power, as he is the stealth black, has the power to be invisible at will. Which, as we all know, is Sanji's biggest dream. Because he wanted the clear, clear fruit, so he could uh, spy on uh, naked women. And now he practically has that, so now he can do it. So page one switches to his primal beast form. And, of course, knocks back Sanji. You know what is so amazing? That Uda includes two things in a chapter against Sanji. The first, a badass scene. And then he gets k punched back. His pa his kid couldn't even block a beastal punch. Once again, uh, showing my theory correct. Sanji hates... No, Uda hates Sanji's character. What more proof do you have? All proof are there. Granted, however, Sanji do not suffer that much damage because, well, the raid suit and all. And Page One thinks he's done, but um, Sanji keeps on fighting as to destroy the capital. And then after that, well, the rest of the scenes are just so very upset as Robin goes around the place trying to find uh, information about in suspicious in a suspicious room and gets and then gets confronted by the Orochi Onaba. Oni Wabashu, which is his personal ninja bodyguards. The fact that they managed to snuck up upon Robin is actually pretty surprising and also insulting at the same time. Especially as the big leader with a very big forehead who calls himself Fukurokuju appears. I am so upset at this scene. They snuck up on Robin? 
Why doesn't she have hockey? Come on, Oda. Make her have hockey. Of all the women in the Strahd crew, granted it's only two so far, she is the one who should have hockey. So yeah, how is she gonna get out of this? She has just one explanation to explain herself. Granted, I mean, Robin does have a pretty surprising devil fruit, so I think she could uh, uh, cripple all of these ninjas in one go. But we'll see. But the final scene is the most upset of the all, as uh, Tama, Ukiku, and Chopper, oh yeah, and let's Momonosuke too, finds someone washed up on the beach. And I have to say, how the hell did that woman wash up on the beach? Granted, I knew she wouldn't drown, only because of despair and not the fact that she's a Yonko. Yeah, it's Big Mom. Big Mom has somehow washed up on the shore. A devil for you, sir, washed up on the shore. How the hell does that even make sense? How did she get up on the shore? Well, I don't know. Of course, Chopper panics because, she, because he knows who she is. And Big Mom awakens. And the first words she says is, Who am I? Okay, the reason why that is upsetting is because there was a theory a very long time ago that suggested that uh, uh, Big Mom is gonna become an ally. But the more we got into the whole Cake Island arc, the more I hated that theory because Big Mom can't be an ally. She's too unforgivable. And now Oda gives us this. It is almost to play with us, saying, Okay, Big Mom is gonna be redeemed. She's now gonna become an ally because she has memory loss. She has forgotten who she is. And that is why she's going to become an ally. I think that is what a lot of theorists are going to say as soon as they see this. And as you ask me, this just pisses me off. <sighs> Please, Uda, do not redeem Big Mom. Do not redeem Big Mom. She is too unforgivable. She has to die. But instead, she's going to be redeemed. It's worth noting that the one who finds her is Chopper, the guy who wants to cure any sickness. And as we all know, Big Mom is sick. Not only for her memory loss now, but also because of her hunger issues. So I think Chopper wants to cure that. But yeah, that's basically the chapter. Not that remarkable, really. I mean, the Sanji scene was badass. The suit design was pretty cool. Stealth Black is a thing. Sanji's dream is uphold. But Sanji still was uh, punched around by one be well, one guy. He couldn't even block his kick with his Jerma 6 suit. Even though it's worth noting that he didn't suffer any damage from it too, so... Who knows? Law did point out that who cares what happens to this town. I mean, that is kind of cruel saying, although technically Law is not really that good as we think he is. We've just gotten used to him following the Don Flamingo incident. So, I mean, and also the flower capital has pretty rude people. Other than that, this was just an upset cha chapter. Robin was cornered by some ninjas. How is she gonna get away from that? No idea. The fact that she's sweating is also pretty annoying. And Big Mom has memory loss, which seems to imply that she is going to become an ally. So yeah, this chapter didn't resonate with me that well. Give me your thoughts if you have any.